Hello everybody and welcome to another Hearthstone video. So, quite recently I got to Legend Rank, which is lovely and it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. Um, today the servers are down, and so, uh, just for just for maintenance, and so instead of sitting here twiddling my thumbs waiting for Hearthstone to come back up, I figured what I would do is do a little video talking about uh, my trip to Legend this, this season, and, uh, and some tips that I would have for those of you in rank 5 to 1 or so, um, to make that final push into Legend yourself. Uh, for many, many seasons, I was somebody who consistently got up to rank 5 or higher, and, um, you know, I was playing with Legend players, I was winning regularly, but for some reason I couldn't push myself over the top. Um, there were a couple of things that I learned in doing it this season that I think is, is uh, there were good realizations to make, and I think they're valuable for people at the same sort of level. Now, that isn't to say that people who are not rank 5 to 1 can't benefit from this, um, but in all likelihood you can benefit from other things more. So for instance, if you're stuck around rank 15 or so, probably you need to work on your mechanics a little bit. So you need to work on, you know, whether to go for the board or the face, um, you need to maybe even get some more cards in your collection, things like that. If you're topping out at rank 10 or so, Probably the thing you need to worry about most is game sense, I would imagine. I mean, it, di it differs for everybody, but that's usually what I see. And when I say game sense, what I mean is, um, you know, not loading up the board against a mage on turn 6, and not making your board too exploitable for swipe against a druid, for instance. Understanding that on turn 9 against a druid, um, at any point your health can go from 14 to dead because of the Savage or Force of Nature combo, so you've got to play around that. Um, knowing not to play a minion that's important that has four or less health on turn three against a paladin because they will use the true silver champion and kill it right away for free just stuff like this um, knowing essentially what's in everybody's deck and how you can play around it and that only comes with experience and once you start to really get a hold of that that's how i think you get up from rank 10 or so up to the higher ranks um, but once you hit rank five and once you hit that area where you can't get win streaks anymore I think it comes down really to not making mistakes, and it also comes down to making a couple of sort of mental uh, mental adjustments in how you play, and sort of your general attitude towards the game, and in general sort of things of that nature, um, in addition to a couple of decks things. So I'm going to split this video into a couple of parts. The first, I'm going to talk about my own personal trip to Legend and how it worked, uh, and then I will talk a little bit about some tips that I have for you, and um, and some good ideas, I think, uh, when it comes to getting to Legend for the first time. So, uh, let's get right to it. So, when I started uh, this season, I started with a good old-fashioned Ramp Druid. Um, I was facing a lot of Zoo, and because I started ranking up really on, on August the 1st, Everybody that I was playing, essentially, was already a Legend player in a, in a different season. Um, I played against Professionals here and there. I played against Tides of Time and Amaz uh, and a couple of other players uh, ranking up, which was uh, quite the experience for me. And so, in the beginning, it was very tough. Um, but there was a lot, a lot, a lot of Zoo going around, and so I made a Ramp Druid deck specifically for the purpose of beating Zoo. I had a lot of taunts. Uh, Sludge Belcher at that time was very, very new. And so I put that in there, and, uh, and and things like that. And so with that very taunt-heavy ramp druid deck, I went on basically a win streak from about rank 18 all the way up to about rank 10. Lost once or twice, but mostly it was all wins. Um, and then around rank 10, that stopped working out as well. And then I switched over to a handlock. And I played a handlock from uh, about rank 10 up to about rank 7 or so. And then the handlock started to stall out a little bit. Uh, the meta was changing a bit, so I decided to switch over to a control warrior because I figured the control warriors are really stable and uh, they have a reasonably good shot against anything, so I decided to do it. So that took me up to about rank 5, and, uh, and we'll talk about this in a lot of depth later, but uh, rank 5 is where I started to track my stats, and tracking stats is stupidly important if you want to get to Legend. I will spend a good deal of time talking about that in the near future. Uh, in any case, I started to track my stats, and the Control Warrior just stopped working. Um, I got up to rank 4, then I tanked back down to rank 7, got up to rank 6, tanked back down to rank 7, and then I decided to switch out. 
My biggest problem was I was facing a lot of mid-range hunter decks, and prior to Death Spite, and I don't really know much about the matchup now, um, prior to Death Spite coming out, um, the warrior control matchup against mid-range hunter was pretty bad. Um, the control warrior just got overwhelmed, essentially. They don't really have a good way of dealing with a lot of creatures on the board at once, and if a hunter can get board control with like three creatures or so that are, that are difficult to brawl, um, you really are going to be in dire straits, um, especially because they have such efficient ways of dealing with things like armor smiths and acolytes of pain and all that stuff. So um, my hunter matchup was down to like 27%. It was really, really bad. And so I switched over to something uh, that would be reasonable against hunters and really good against everything else. And I actually chose mid-range hunter myself. Now, this isn't quite the same mid-range hunter that Raynad popularized on August 14th, um, when the Mad Scientist came into play. In fact, um, that's the day that I got Legend, was rank, uh, was, was August 15th, or 14th, rather. And uh, I did use the Mad Scientist when it came out, but I was not using Raynad's deck. Um, I had a different sort of a thing that I built. Uh, partially myself, I used Sparks uh, Hunter deck, which was on Hearthbone and Hearthstone players as a bit of a base. Then I changed some things around myself. Uh, and I'll show you that list uh, in a moment. Uh, in any case, I was playing the mid-range hunter, and uh, it was very grindy. It took me 180 matches, but uh, and and something like 100 and 106 wins or so. Um, however, I grinded and grinded, and I got my way up to legend, and that was basically that. I stayed with that deck the entire time, and uh, and it paid off. So that's the basic of it. Now, when it comes to things I realized. There are a couple of things that I realized that were really very important. And so the very first thing is tracking stats. Holy crap, tracking stats is important. So I'm going to go over to my stats now. Um, and so there are a lot of things here I want you to ignore. First of all, I want you to ignore my overall ranked win rate because that has um, that is not a good representation just because it takes into account a lot of things that do not appear here. Um, I specifically stopped tracking stats the day after I got to Legend for the purpose of um, making this video, because I really wanted this curve. But um, ignore this day as well. This day was a 50% day. You can see a lot of defeats as Druid. I just talked about how I got to Legend with Hunter. That's because when I got to Legend, I started to screw around with Druid a lot and try to make up some new uh, innovative Druid decks. And I was on a bit of a roll for a little while, had some victories uh, down here, but... Um, didn't work out so well in the end. And so that's where that comes from. This was my trip to Legend from rank 5. Okay, So on this day I started out as a control warrior. I was 50%, didn't move at all. And then this day as a control warrior I did not do very well. I was negative, didn't work out. Over here I switched to the hunter, and I got a little bit better as the hunter, and I got a lot better as the hunter. And then I had an off day where I was not really feeling like playing very much. And uh, I was also going out of town in a couple of days, and I was packing, and I was sort of distracted. But then the night before I went away, I really, really focused, and I really wanted to hit Legend, and I got a 71% win rate and blew right through it. Now, to give you an idea, if you have a 60% win rate or so, a little bit more, um, that's really, really good. People love that. I mean, 60% um, win rate is phenomenal. And so, uh, to put that into perspective for you, if you win three games and lose two, that's a 60% win rate. Okay, that's three out of five is 60%. So, when people look at like a 60% win rate or 65% win rate, that's really good. And that's losing a lot. So, one of the things that I want you to pay attention to when you're going up to Legend is that losing is normal. Okay, losing is super normal. And you will lose a lot. Because a lot of the players who are going up to Legend with you are very, 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 very good. And so, uh, you know, they're, they're players who don't make mistakes. They are Legend rank players from other seasons. And so the likelihood is you're going to lose a lot. And so you've got to be comfy with this. This is my actual uh, deck and statistics uh, from my climb to Legend with the Midrange Hunter. The deck list itself is, is nothing super special. Um, it actually looks very much like Raynad's uh, Mad Scientist deck today. Uh, I made this one a little bit before he did with a couple of changes. 
Uh, as you can see, I only have one mad scientist and an owl instead, and only one explosive trap, because I also have an oasis snapjaw in here. Uh, the oasis snapjaw with the houndmaster is absolutely amazing and kills a lot more things than it should. Uh, and no tracking or anything like that. Otherwise, this is pretty standard. I don't claim this to be especially unique or interesting. Um, like I said, I took it from Sparks. Uh, his was the base, and then I made some changes of my own. Added in Leroy some kill commands, and uh, generally speaking, sort of made it a, a bit of a different deck. So, it's uh, as far as I know, it's unique, but it's it's not so unique that it's worth talking about specifically. What's actually more interesting to me about this page is this graph right here. So, uh, what I want you to notice about this, so I just talked about losing, and losing is normal, right? My statistically most common matchup was the Hunter matchup. And it was a low matchup for me. It was negative, 38%. Um, now this comes, this comes from a lot of things. This comes from the fact that at the beginning, I was not very good against Hunters. I didn't really know how to fight them. Um, this matchup improved over time as I was playing it quite a bit. My last couple of days, uh, getting to Legend, it was closer to 50%, but my first couple of days were really bad, so it turned out being, you know, not so great in the beginning. Um, but more importantly, it's my statistically most common matchup. Uh, and not even not even close, right? It's like 50 matches out of 180. That's, that's a lot. That's almost a third. But if you look at all the other matches, I'm at 70-ish percent for all of them, right? Druid is 70, Mage was almost 70, Paladin's almost 80, Shaman is 80, Warlock is 70, and Warrior is almost 80. My other two bad matchups were Priest and Rogue. Um, for a while with the Priest, I was doing okay, but then I sank down very quickly. With the Rogue, uh, I had really, really bad luck in the first three or so matches against them. And so I had like a 0% win rate, but then it started to come up a little bit. Still unfavored though, because Aggro Rogue in particular is very, very good against mid-range Hunter. So there's some tips to be had in this. So the first tip is this. I think that if I didn't have stat tracking up, if I was not tracking my stats, then I would probably have switched to a different deck. And that would have been a stupid idea. Because a lot of my matches were Hunter. And every time I played a Hunter, I started to feel really, you know, defeatist right at the beginning. I was like, oh man, it's another Hunter. I'm probably going to lose. That sucks. That's a really terrible thing to do. First of all, you don't ever want to shoot yourself in the foot that early anyway, right? To say right at the beginning of the match, oh, I'm probably going to lose for X reason, Y reason. Oh, this is a really bad starting hand, I'm probably going to lose. Oh, this is a really bad matchup, probably going to lose. Don't do that. Because when you do that, that basically sort of, it, it makes it more acceptable in your mind. It makes it so you give up a lot easier. It makes you much more willing to concede. It also makes it much more willing for you to just sort of not play as top form as you otherwise would have if you actually believed you could do it. So don't defeat yourself before you begin. Uh, I think I did that for at least a little bit when it came to the Hunter, and uh, that negatively affected my matchup. But the thing is, without stats, I almost assuredly would have switched to a different deck, maybe even Aggro Rogue or something like that. And Aggro Rogue has a great matchup against Hunter, but not so great against everything else. And so, as a result, I probably would have not hit Legend nearly as quickly. I probably would have had a much higher lose rate against everything. What tracking my stats allowed me to do was realize that even though my statistically most common matchup was actually a negative one for me, I was like at 70%, which is phenomenal, 70 or 80% against basically every other common matchup I had. Priest and Rogue were pretty common, um, so that sucked. But like Warlock was my second most common matchup, and then Druid was third, and Warrior was fourth, and all of those were exceptionally high. And so that was pretty solid. I was really happy to have done that, because the context basically said, you know, one of my matchups is bad, but three of my other common matchups are excellent. So in all likelihood, that's probably the best way to look at it. The other thing is, and this is really important, if you add these together, 37, 19, 24, versus 49, it was much more likely statistically for me to encounter one of my second, third, or fourth most common matchups than my first one. Which means that even though this is the most common, if I switch to a deck just to counter that at the sacrifice of not dealing with some of my other ones as well, I would have had a net decrease in effectiveness. So it's really, really important to track your stats and get a good impression of what's out there, what the meta is. 
because if you understand what the numbers are and say, I've got one really bad matchup, but the other ones are all great, this is a really good circumstance where you should really just keep going with that deck. I met a lot of people uh, on the ladder, because I was laddering fairly early in the season, um, there were a lot fewer people up there when I was playing. And so, for instance, I met a guy, uh, a particular player, about three or four times uh, in the same night, laddering, same as me, and I felt really bad for him, because the first time I played him, I played him and he was playing Miracle Rogue, and uh, and I beat him. And so, cool, fine. I I was playing my Hunter, and I, I only played my Hunter up to Legend. So, he was playing the Rogue, so be it, and then about two matches later I met him again, and he was playing a Handlock, and I was like, well that's interesting, okay. Handlock is probably this deck's best matchup, so I completely dominated him. And then, uh, a couple of matches later, he was playing a Paladin, I encountered him again, I beat him then. And a couple of matches later, he was playing an Aggro Rogue, which is probably this deck's worst matchup, and I still beat him. And it isn't that he was a bad player, he was making great choices, and he was doing a really good job, but you could see he was switching decks regularly, and as a result of that, he just wasn't as effective with any one deck, right? If you don't have the perfect practice, I mean, it's, it's one of these things, right? If you get to uh, enough practice with a given deck, your turn three and turn four, you have like four options in front of you, or three options that you could play, you know exactly which one is going to be the most effective against the given matchup that you're playing because you've had experience with it. You just get a lot more practice. I want to go back to this graph because basically what you can see is from this point to this point, I was playing the same deck against basically the same opponents, okay? And the win rate increases is phenomenal, even over a couple of days. Just because I started to learn the deck a lot better, the players weren't getting worse. The players, if anything, were getting better because there were more and more hunters being played. But my knowledge of the hunter allowed me to have an increased win rate significantly as the days went on because I was just more familiar with the deck. So if you're going to climb to Legend, try to pick a deck and stick with it. And more importantly, track your stats because it will make you feel a lot better about yourself in almost every way. And if you are tracking your stats and you have a lower than 50% win rate, do it over like 30 or 40 matches so you have a statistically significant sample. And then, then you can switch. Because then you have the data to back you up and say, oh yeah, well, I guess I can switch now because, you know, the math says I'm doing worse than I could be, so I'll get a new deck. And so, don't do things on impulse, because that will almost always result in more losses rather than more wins. And back everything up with math, because you can do that in this game. Um, I'm using, as you can see, it's cut off, I know, but uh, Hearth Stats. HearthStats is a wonderful website, um, and my favorite thing about HearthStats is not actually the app that, that you download and does things for you, um, because I actually prefer to enter my things in manually. So if I go to Recent Matches, um, what it has here, so you can see the 70% win rate um, in action here, but what it has up here is Quick Entry, and it's really, really nice. So I pick any one of my decks. Um, and, you know, you build decks on the website. You pick any one of the decks and say, okay, so I made a, you know, mid-range hunter, fine. And I played against, let's say, a shaman or a rogue, let's say. It was in ranked. I could say it was in casual. I started out with a coin or not, and I won, I lost, or I drew. You put that in, and it just enters in exactly like this. And that's all you need. That is completely all the information that you need. You don't even need to care about the coin all that much. You just need to know who you fought, whether you won, and that's about it. And so it's a really, really powerful tool, I think, and really, really simple as well. It really helps your win rate. So those, I think, are actually my biggest tips. You want to pay attention to stats. You definitely want to take stats. You want to keep the same deck. Uh, one tip I have about the deck you pick, it doesn't matter what deck you pick. Um, but what does matter, I would argue, if it's the first time you're going to Legend, don't pick a control deck. Do not pick a control deck. The reason for this is the control decks like the Control Warrior, Control Priest, uh, Druid, all that sort of stuff, even, even the Druid, um, they're slow. They're really slow. Matches that continually go to fatigue, they're not ideal for climbing to Legend because you're going to have to grind out a lot of games. If you look at, um, you know, I... I played something like 
180 games from only my Hunter deck to get to Legend. That's actually pretty quick. I, uh, you know, it's 106 wins or so. Trump from uh, rank, I don't know, I guess 25 up to Legend had something like um, 196 wins with his free-to-play mage, which um, if you translate that into actual matches, if you use a 70% win rate, is something like 280 or so matches. So like 106 matches to get to Legend from rank 5 is not so bad. But you're going to have to play a lot of matches. And so get used to that. And the the problem with playing Control is that if each of those matches is 5 or 10 minutes longer than if you were playing mid-range or aggro, that's actually a really significant amount of time. So if you're the first time going to Legend, use mid-range or use aggro. Do something that can actually grind out a lot of matches really quickly. Um, because you will... You will do a lot better that way. You'll feel better, you'll get more matches out of the way faster, and losses won't be nearly as devastating. If you're playing Zoo versus a Control Warrior or something like that, you know, if you go to Fatigue and grind out and then somebody top decks, uh, you know, Deathwing and kills you, as a Control Warrior, you will just want to cry because you put 20 minutes into that game. If you're playing the Zoo and somebody top decks Death Lord, Deathwing and kills you, so be it. Okay, you spent five minutes, you can do the same trick four times in the same time it would take you to lose that way for a control warrior. The other thing that I want to talk about really quickly is, I mean, I've already said, you're going to lose a lot. Don't get angry. That's the biggest thing. RNG is a part of this game. RNG is the biggest part of this game in a lot of ways. And so what that means is, you're going to get top decked. You are going to get top decked by a Doom Guard, and it will kill you, and you will be annoyed. But by the same token, you are going to top deck your enemy too. You are going to top deck that force of nature that's going to make you win. You've done it before, you will do it again. If you get angry at somebody top decking you, pay attention to the next time you get lucky with a top deck, and you will realize that you get lucky just about as often as they do. Try your hardest when RNG determines the outcome of a game to not get angry. Because essentially, it's nobody's fault. It's not like your opponent outplayed you. It's not like your opponent you know, did anything special, frankly, you randomly lost. And there will be times when you randomly win. And that's okay. You just need to pay attention to the fact that if you get angry, or if you get sort of out of sorts that way, if you get too invested, you're going to have problems because you're going to not play as well. You're going to be focused on the anger, you're going to be focused on how stupid your opponent is or whatever else, and you're going to be mad, and it's going to cost you games. It's going to cost you a lot of games. Don't do it. If you lose three times in a row and that really annoys you, take a break. Get away from it. Um, you know, do do something that will calm you down a little, because I think it's very important to understand that when you are going for Legend, losing is normal. It is statistically completely normal to lose just about as many games as you win. And so, if that annoys you, don't do it, right? Let it settle for a little while. Nobody likes to lose, especially when, you know, you just got up to rank 4 and then you log in, you lose two matches, and you're back down to rank 5 again. That really sucks. But don't let it get to you. It's statistically normal, and that's why tracking, I think, is so important. You realize that it's all statistically normal, it's regular, and it doesn't affect anything. You'll be fine. You just need to play calmly, you need to make sure your mechanics are on par, that you're not making mistakes, and then you just go for it. Uh, this video is already getting a little bit long, and so I'm not going to go into sort of common mistakes. Maybe I will do that in the future. Um, common sort of gameplay mistakes people need to watch for. But I think really the biggest part of getting to Legend is putting in the time, grinding, and essentially making sure mentally you are completely prepared to do that at any given time. You need to track your stats, and you need to be willing to lose a lot, and willing to be calm about it. That's really key. So... That's the basic stuff about getting to Legend, in my experience. Um, now, what I want you to notice is that, really, in there, I didn't talk a lot about decks. I didn't say, oh yeah, play this deck and you'll totally get to Legend easy. Because the thing is, it changes every day, right? Uh, right now, if you tried to get to Legend with Midrange Hunter, I think you're actually probably already over the curve. People are starting to learn how to counter the Midrange Hunter. People are starting to build decks specifically for the purpose of countering the Midrange Hunter. And they are getting to Legend. And so, rather than building a mid-range hunter like I did, or like everyone else on the ladder seems to be at the moment, that's something that's probably not going to get you to Legend right now. And so, actually sitting there and 
me telling you to play this deck, it's an insta-win, is not going to be useful. It's not about the deck. It almost never is about the deck. It's completely and totally mental, and you should treat it as such. Play well, pick a consistent deck, pick a mid-range or aggro deck, and then focus when you play. Don't be on Reddit or anything like that. Don't be looking at other websites or videos or whatever when you're playing. Don't be watching streams when you play. When you play and you're trying to get to Legend, you should focus on your game. Play it and pay a lot of attention to it. And that is how you will actually succeed. So, uh, that's it for me today, I think. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions on any of that stuff, feel free to ask here. You can tweet at me, uh, at DreadmakerHS. Um, you know, any anything like that, I'm happy to answer, I'm happy to talk about. Um, perhaps in the near future I'll put in a sort of a common mistakes sort of video as well. Um, but I think Here's the thing to remember, really, out of all of this. If you can get to rank 5, you can get to Legend. It's that simple. The entire thing about getting to Legend is you got to be mentally stable for it, you got to be calm, you got to be ready, you got to focus, and after that, the pieces will fall together. you got to pay a little bit of attention to the meta, you have to have a relatively, you know, stable deck, but by the same token, you just got to play the game, you got to focus on the game, you got to be mentally prepared to play the game, and then you can do it. It's just only a matter of time. So, I wish you luck in your own travels to Legend. I thank you very much for watching this, and I will see you guys next time.